Welcome to my board game quick start guide for Seasons. This is the second video wherein I discuss the rules of the game. Seasons is a competitive game about wizards taking part in a three year magic tournament. You win the game by scoring victory points, and you gain victory points by moving up the crystal track and for power cards that you have in play at the end of the game. You can also lose victory points for power cards remaining in your hand at the end of the game, and for using special bonus powers that I'll explain later on. At the end of each turn, the season marker will move forward a certain number of months. The game ends at the end of the third year. At the start of the game, you'll have nine power cards. You'll only have access to three of these cards during the first year, and will gain access to three more of them at the start of the second year, and the final three at the start of the third year. Before the first turn, you should look through the cards and select which ones you'll want in each year, placing the three you want in year two off to the side under your Library 2 token, and the three for year three under the Library 3 token. There are longer descriptions and clarifications for each card in the back of the manual if you have any questions. I'll describe the common symbols when I explain how to summon and use the cards. When everybody's divided up their cards, you're ready to begin. The game starts in month one of year one, which is winter, and uses the blue dice. If you're the first player, take the blue dice and roll them. The symbols on the dice represent resources you'll gain on your turn. You'll then select one of the dice and place it in front of you. The player to your left will select one of the remaining dice, and so on until everybody has selected a die. There should be one die left over. Then it's time to take your turn. First, you'll gain the benefit from the season die that you selected. If the die contains element symbols, you will take an element token for each symbol and place it in your reserve. For example, if I'd taken this die, I'd gain two water tokens. You can't have more than seven element tokens in your reserve at any one time. If the die has a numeral on it, you'll gain that many crystals, moving your sorcerer token up that many spaces on the crystal track. For example, if I'd taken this die, I'd gain six crystals. If there's a ring around the symbols on the die, that means you have the option of transmuting elements this turn. When you transmute elements, you'll take elements from your reserve and turn them directly into crystals. The number of crystals you'll gain for each element varies by season, and can be found on the season wheel. The elements that are rarer during those seasons are worth more crystals when transmuted. For example, during winter, transmuting water tokens or air tokens gains you one crystal each, but fire tokens are worth two crystals each, and earth tokens are each worth three crystals. If you transmute during the spring, earth and water tokens are worth less, while fire tokens are worth more. If the die has this rectangular symbol on it, that means you can draw a card from the deck at the center of the table, which you can then add to your hand or discard. There is no hand limit. If the die is a star symbol, move your summoning gauge up one place. This is important because the number on your summoning gauge is the maximum number of power cards you can have in play at one time. Since your gauge starts the game at zero, this means that you'll need to collect at least one star before you can summon your first power card. On your turn, you can also summon power cards from your hand. The cost to summon a card is listed in the middle of the card, right below the picture. They can cost element tokens, crystals, or both. When you summon a power card, you pay the cost and place it face up in front of you on the table. Use of power cards is where the main strategy of the game is, and you can set up some interesting combos. There are three types of power cards, and the difference is in when you gain their bonus. Some cards give you a benefit once when they're initially played. These cards are marked with this arrow symbol. For example, if I had the Amulet of Air in my hand, I could summon it if I had at least two air tokens in reserve and my summoning gauge was high enough. The Amulet of Air says, increase your summoning gauge by two. When I summon this card, I place it face up in front of me and immediately increase my summoning gauge. This card gives me no other direct benefit, but will be worth six victory points at the end of the game. Some cards have an ongoing effect. These are marked with this circular arrow symbol. For example, if I had at least one token of each element in my reserve, and my summoning gauge was high enough, I could summon the Hourglass of Time. The Hourglass of Time says, each change of season, gain one energy token. As long as I have this card on the table in front of me, I'll be able to take an energy token from the supply each time the season changes. Because it doesn't specify the element, I can choose whichever element I want. This card will be worth six victory points at the end of the game. 
Some cards have an effect that needs to be activated. These cards are marked with the gear symbol. For example, I could summon the Die of Malice. The cost listed on this card is zero crystals, so it's effectively free, as long as my summon engage is high enough. The Die of Malice says, instead of performing the actions on your season die, re-roll it. Perform the new actions of the die roll and gain two crystals. If I chose to use this effect, I'd turn the card sideways to indicate that I've already used it this turn, and turn it back at the end of my turn. This card will be worth 8 victory points at the end of the game. I can summon any number of power cards during my turn, as long as I have the necessary resources and space on my summoning gauge. Finally, there are several bonus actions you can take during your turn, which can help you out of a tight spot, but will cost you victory points at the end of the game. These are shown on your player board. When you use one, move the marker forward one place. This means that gaining one bonus will cost you 5 victory points at the end of the game, two bonuses will cost you 12 victory points, and using three bonuses will cost you 20 victory points. You can't use more than three of these bonuses over the course of the game. One of the bonuses allows you to trade two element tokens from your supply for any other element tokens. One of the bonuses allows you to transmute energy tokens during this turn, gaining one extra crystal for each token transmuted. One of the bonuses increases your summoning gauge by one, and one of the bonuses allows you to draw two cards when you use the draw die action, keeping one of the cards and discarding the other. When you've taken all of your actions, it's time for the player on your left to take their turn, starting with the actions on their season die. Play continues until each player has taken their turn, and then the month marker moves. The number of months it moves is determined by the die which was left over after everybody chose a die at the start of the turn. If that die is one dot, the marker moves ahead one month. Two dots makes the marker move ahead two months, and three dots moves the marker ahead three months. Since the game lasts for three years, the number of turns in the game can vary greatly, depending on which dice are left over after each turn. After every turn, the player to the left of the first player becomes the new first player, and will roll the season dice for the next turn. If the month marker moves into a new season, this means you'll roll a different set of dice next turn, and the number of crystals you'll get for transmuting elements will change. If the month marker moves into a new year, move the year marker ahead one space, and each player will add the power cards that they set aside at the start of the game for that year to their hand. The game ends at the end of the third year. Then it's time for the final scoring. To determine your final score, add the point value of the cards you have in play to the number of crystals that you've got. Subtract points for the special bonus actions that you took during the game, and subtract 5 points for each unplayed power card remaining in your hand. The player with the highest score is the winner. This has been a Board Game Quick Start Guide for Seasons. Refer to your manual for additional information and clarification, and don't forget that the most important rule is to have fun.